During the PlayStation 4 era, Sony released their first mid-generation console upgrade, the PlayStation 4 Pro. Before this, the PlayStation had seen redesigns in every generation. This was usually just to make the console smaller or slimmer, not really upgrading the internal workings of the machine in any significant way. The PS4 Pro changed that, and that change has continued on to the PlayStation 5 era as the PS5 Pro was announced on September 10th of 2024. While the PS4 Pro seemed to be a relative success, selling around 22 million units worldwide, the approach that Sony seems to be taking with the PS5 Pro doesn't seem to be heading toward the same result, in my opinion. I say this as someone who is very invested in the PlayStation ecosystem and as someone who had purchased a PS4 Pro. While I was interested in seeing what the PS5 Pro had to offer, I must admit I was largely disappointed in the announcement. I want to take a look at the reasons why I'm not super excited about the PS5 Pro and why I think that Sony's strategy here seems a little strange to me. It's certainly not that I want this endeavor to fail, but it just seems like like sales will not be as strong as the PS4 Pro, in my opinion. Let's get the obvious reason out first, and that's the price. The PS5 Pro is going to release for $699 and is a digital only console. To have a disk drive, you need to purchase a separate upgrade, which will cost another $79 if you have physical disks you want to play on it. This results in a cost of $778 before tax for a mid console upgrade. That's a lot of money. But if it was comparable to the base cost of a PS5, then that would be understandable in my opinion. This isn't the case though. The digital version of the PS5 is $449 and the version with a disk drive is $499. This means that the PS5 Pro is $250 to $280 more expensive than the comparable versions of the base consoles. That's a significant increase. This is also very different than how the pricing went with the PS4 Pro. The PS4 started off with a retail price of $399, which by the time the PS4 Pro launched, the original had received a price cut and was only $349. So when the PS4 Pro launched, it launched at that same price point that the original system launched at, which was $399. This was a very reasonable price and people bought the system. It was only $50 more for the Pro mid-generation upgrade. It also came with a disk drive and everything that the original PS4 would have had, so there was no need to buy extra accessories or things like that. Comparing these two releases, the PS5 Pro is a significantly higher cost than the base system. It's also not providing the same experience as the base system, especially if you bought a PS5 with a disk drive in it. It's going to be a hard sell for many, but the most hardcore tech enthusiasts to fork over an extra $250 to $280 if you're considering your first PS5, let alone those of us who already have a PS5 in the first place. I think this discrepancy in price is a big deal even in the best of times, but when the world has been experiencing high inflation and the cost of food and necessities has been going up, it seems seems almost tone deaf to release something like this. I get that the price may also be due to this inflation as well, but it may have been better to just pass on a mid-generation upgrade than to release something that may flop pretty bad. I also know that compared to the price of a new PC, which is a lot higher than $700, this is actually maybe a pretty good deal for what you're getting, but even then, I still don't think that that's necessarily a convincing argument for why the price is so different than the base model. Now, the price is a substantial issue to start with, but there are other factors that also play into why I'm not super excited about this mid-generation upgrade. One of these reasons has to do with the launch of the PS5 in the first place. The PS5 had the misfortune to launch right in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic. This made it very difficult to get your hands on a PS5 for many reasons. Sony had trouble getting chips and other components to put out a steady amount of PS5s to meet the demand. The PS5 also wasn't being shipped to physical stores due to the pandemic, which gave rise to scalpers buying up large amount of stock to resell at ridiculous prices. Due to these factors, I wasn't able to get a PS5 until mid-2021, and that required a good amount of dedication to keep track of the next shipment coming to retailers and trying to buy one before they were all sold out. I'm sure that there were many people who were still unable to get a PS5 until much later than I was first able to. That means that people weren't even able to get a PS5 for one, two, maybe even three years after launch. Having the PS5 Pro then come out in 2024 
4 may make it hard to justify buying an upgrade when some haven't even had the PS5 for very long. Connected to this is the fact that the PS5 has not had a lot of games that have been exclusively made for this console generation. Due to backwards compatibility with the PS4, many games have been released for both systems. This is probably so that companies wouldn't have to rely on people getting their hands on a PS5 in order to play their newly released game. This may make many of the upgrades that the PS5 Pro is touting not very relevant for many games. I know the list as of now is only 14 games that will be PS5 Pro upgraded. This number may increase with time, but that's not a huge incentive to go out and purchase the system right away. I know we have been seeing more games releasing focused on this generation of consoles only, but still the numbers aren't huge and may not be enough to put down this level of cash on an upgrade for a handful of games. While these are things that may hold many, including myself back, it does sound like there are some interesting features within the PS5 Pro. It sounds like it could make games look nicer and run smoother and better. And the big feature seems to be the ability to have the 4K graphics and 60 frames per second together in games instead of having a quality or performance mode in certain games. This sounds like a feature that will be for those games that are updated for the PS5 Pro, but there are other graphical improvements within the system that should help polish up many games beyond those that are getting specific PS5 Pro updates. The big question for me though is, is such an upgrade worth $700 to $780? And that I'm just not sure about. I guess for those who love cutting edge graphics and 60 frames per second, this may be a very tempting upgrade if you've got the money. I'm just not sure that the upgrade is really worth it for me. While I do like high quality graphics and I do like games running smoothly, those aren't necessarily my highest priorities when I'm playing video games. I'm more interested in the story and the gameplay and those aspects than I am in terms of like having the shiny graphics on the block. While I do hope that it meets the sales expectations of Sony, like I don't want to see this flop just because it's not for me doesn't mean I want it to fail. I just can't help but feel that this will be a very tough sell to many people out there. What are your thoughts on the PS5 Pro? Do you think it's worth the price point or do you think it will be a tough sell for many people? Let me know in the comments as I'm interested in seeing what others think about this release. That's all for this video though, so I'll see you in the next one.